Hi, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of Adulting in the Modern World. And this week, it is Danielle Dow and myself, Donna Polita. This week, we're going into a little bit more specific into how we can use these techniques to stay balanced in this global climate that we're in. So especially as women, especially as moms, as uh, householders, uh, how do we keep ourselves? Being mindful is, uh, is key in everything, in, in everything. And that's where we've got to turn off our cell phones. We've yes. got to put them away. You had your silent yesterday for a few hours. Like you really, minds on do not disturb right now. And you know, so often when we're doing our, um, our work together or if I'm with a client or if I'm doing my mantras or meditation and I've got my phone on silent or do not disturb and I'll forget it then. There. what a blessing what a blessing right and then everyone can wait till donna remembers to turn it back on because you know we really think about it though how did we operate in the 80s and 90s if it was an emergency someone found a way to contact you and let's not overuse this incredible technology which can be used for such good it brought us together you know it's creating pranalakshmi it's creating so many communities around the globe. It can be so good, but at the same time, it can really destroy relationships. And one thing, you know, there's a cute little thing that it's so strange, like you see a couple and they're both on their phones, right? And um, who knows what they're scrolling through and looking at and so on. And what's funny is, I don't know if I've ever really lived that moment. And so part of me was like, oh, that's so cute. And yet my partner, every time I step into the room, he closes his phone. And I'm like, oh, but can't I sit next to you and just kind of, you know, browse with you? And so I found it strange. And I, and I cornered him a few times and I said, what's up? He said, well, you're in the room now. So I want to pay attention to you. Oh, <laughs> Eureka. I mean, that's what relationships are about, right? And so, yes, we'll share funny videos and we'll watch some funny YouTube clips. We like watching comedians and uh, we'll put on music and dance. Mm -hmm. What I've found in this relationship, especially that the phone is, it's not secondary, it's like tertiary. It, it's, it's really down on the list and the relationships are utmost and it's such a breath of fresh air. You know, that for our kids and show them that we can actually pay attention to what they're saying because remember kids mimic they mimic what they see what's yeah. more important than mimicking uh, a parent that's going to give you time and attention and listen to mm -hmm. what you have to say yes the phone is a big uh, it can be really it can be a life savior at the same time it can be uh, such a life drainer <laughs> I mean, for me, it's uh, I see it. I see it more positive. Let's say if I'm stuck in traffic and I've got my phone on. If we had this podcast to record, so I can just put you on. You know, we we were on. We can just record the podcast and we're good. You know, we I can just park park the car on the side, and I've got access to you and to the whole world and my emails and my my uh, <clears throat> my work. Um, but yet when we let uh, we let it come uh, we let it become our addiction and i think this is what's um, what the worry is when when things become an addiction when we go to bed and the, uh, and instead of trying to um, get sleep come to us we we're there scrolling on the phone and mm. checking out let's say social media or instagram and then from one one thing led, leads to another you know then you fall into this long minutes and sometimes hours of no sleep and literally losing time losing time and uh on whatever so i've got a secret there the phones cannot live in the bedroom 
I know I it's hard for secret. some people, right? I love but, that secret. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you've really got, not you, but people, um, especially moms, think about all the stimulus that a mom has during the day, as you said, you know, and, and it, if it's a working mom and a, and a mom that is full time at home because she's working, I know I, I've done both. Um, and I've mostly been a stay at home mom. And so the housework never ends. <laughs> it's always there. Yeah. And the stimulus that a mother goes through for an entire day, and absolutely she wants to relax and watch a, an episode of something or listen, you know, like I love listening to podcasts or listening to inspirational things on, on YouTube. Um, the phone, though, if it can live outside of the bedroom and you set a time and say, okay, I don't know, after 10 p.m. or after 9 p.m., because really the body, it needs many hours to be in production of melatonin. Yes. And, you know, I mentioned this last time about the street lamps outside, about the artificial light that we have well into the night time. And then this artificial light stimulating us through the phones and computers and tablets. It's not going to allow your brain and also your body chemistry to really relax and to sleep. So then sleep, like you said, um, it doesn't come. But what happens if you spend time preparing yourself for bed? What if you, and, and I'll share personally. So when I said that in the last few months, my body was starting to react, it was really on, on overdrive because, um, it wasn't just a move, it was so many things at once. Right. And, and so even though I was doing self care, really, realistically, I needed a lot more. And sometimes it's like, oh, but, you know, that can be selfish. Or how do I how do I explain that to whoever my son, my partner, my uh, parents, as an example, how do I explain that I actually need a lot of self care right now, maybe in three months, it'll be, you know, more balanced, but right now I need a ton. And so I had to rebalance things and reintroduce simple practices like the last few days, been rubbing lavender essential oil on the soles of my feet and Danielle, the sleep is so much deeper, the sleep comes mm -hmm. faster, uh, covering yeah, and just simple techniques, you know. Uh, next on my list is uh, Epsom salt baths with some oils. Okay. So things, yeah, like things that are really going to detox you. A cup of tea an hour or two before bed, something herbal, it something to detox relax. From all the, yeah, from all the radiation. And salt baths are amazing for that. I get my daughter and I, we, we do this on a weekly basis. And um, sorry, I, I caught you. <laughs> oh, no, you're perfect. And on that note, something I started to do, because it depends what country you're in and what services you have available. Um, I've started to introduce uh, hammam spa because uh, for those reasons. So the heat, totally detoxing and the rubbing of salts on the body you come out feeling a different person and there's so much input of toxins through our food, our water, um, the outside air quality, um, and of course, emotional toxicity, right? What we pick up from other people sure. that, that needs to be drained on a daily and weekly basis. So we mentioned Epsom salt, we mentioned essential oils, we mentioned herbal teas, um, I just have to add, uh, we can also use um, sal um, salt, uh, just normal salt, like rocks, you know, we can, in case someone can, because Epsom salt is not available to everyone all the time, so true. we can so just true. use Himalayan salt and we can just put like loads of it um, in the bath. Um, I would say I, I use something about like a cup. Exactly. Um, yeah, just to wash off, uh, just to detox the body. Yeah, and um, yeah, and oils. Your oil. I mean, I would love to have one episode just about oils because you have so much expertise about oils. Thank you. And there's, a, you don't want to laugh. You want to laugh. I'm sitting here and I got four oils right in front of me <laughs> because every time before we do a podcast, I I always tune in with frankincense, and mm -hmm. so. 
essential oils i mean look it, the bottles are handy you throw them in your purse you take them everywhere they're all over my house and the i've been into essential oils since i was a teenager mm. and uh, i know you're into them too yeah and i have mine, I have mine right at my desk as well <laughs> amazing yeah. And so for women, especially, I mean, you can use the, they're for everyone, but women, listen closely, essential oils can change your mood in an instant. I mean, it is instantaneous. Uh, aromatherapy for mood mm. is one of the most incredible therapies that you can do. And um, so these are very simple techniques. There's very expensive oils and then there's very inexpensive oils, you know, coming back to the detox and cleansing, I'll share one last one. And then, yeah, we'll do a whole episode one day. Um, lemon, drops of lemon essential oil in your water in the morning, right? Because it's a lot more potent than, than a regular lemon, which is perfect. If that's all you have available, you go for that. And then someone looking for an even deeper cleanse, like sometimes so we do even 10 drops a day over the course of the day in about a liter and a half to two liters of water. So that's really flushing out toxins, but you've got to be careful. I'll just do a side note on what oils you use because certain brands can't be ingested and other brands can. So and also, I think it depends on the person as well. Some people, they, uh, they get um, funny reactions on since yeah, it's, it's concentrated. Those are few cases. Uh, it's funny, one of my very close friends gets reactions. And so I give her gifts, but she can only do diluted oils as a roll-on. So, you know, there's still ways, there's ways, and you can do um, diffusers where it's just the mist I coming into the house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's another, you know, that's a big conversation, but, you know, just to it touch is. on, right? To touch on some of the things that we actually do. There's a lot that Danielle and I do, and there's a lot that I'm still learning, I'll be honest, because a lot of the self care techniques, um, are quite ancient and a lot of this yeah. ancient wisdom has actually been hidden and, and a lot of it uh, you've got to uncover you've really got to look for it and and find what works for you true and there are very normal ones that uh, we can do like the plants behind you you know uh, to bring some uh, nature inside our house mm -hmm. so, because we used to we're people who used to live in nature and right now with all the cities and the way things are commercialized and we we don't have this nature touch and I see this even with the mothers when when kids are playing in the park a lot of them they're like so afraid of playing with dirt whereas it's something very normal to do but now of course with the pesticides and the herbicides that we use and we want to be careful but it's good to go out in the nature and I just want to add a note on your on the phone now sometimes for some people it's difficult to um to to let go of the phone outside because we became so um attached to this phone that it's closer to us than our partner we carry it around the whole time so before we go to bed it stays next to us you know kind of the charger is next to us so i would say like a step by step kind of um procedure it's fine you know you might think like i'm over exaggerating on it but like it is difficult for many people to just put the phone outside the room so what i tell them yeah, yeah is to put because somehow they get this emotional this anxiety you know so it's just to put either on um like smartphones they do have nowadays this um this um uh, uh, option where you can just put your sleep hours and then it just goes automatically on do not disturb so whomever calls you you just don't answer or you automatically put it on airplane mode you know, you just put it on airplane mode. This is something I, uh, I taught my daughter and she does it automatically. She just, she goes to bed. I mean, before she goes to bed, she just puts her phone on auto on um, airplane mode. And then she learned also to switch off the, the Wi-Fi. I just okay. tell her, just, just turn it off, turn off the, the main modem in the, in the house. Nice. So we just switch it off. 
and we just sleep. And we did, I, I personally, especially, I think meditation just kind of um, uh, cleanses, you, cleanses you a lot. And um, mm -hmm. I could feel it. The days where she was doing online schooling, when she would come to me and I would touch her, I could feel, I, I, could, I could feel something, you know, I could feel the energy. And, um, and this is where I would be like, okay, maybe it's time to take a bath. <laughs> And just to stay away, stay away the, um, from the computer for a few hours, for a day or two, you know, during the weekend and not really, not really um, uh, watch anything there or not play games. Mm -hmm. And let's just go out in the nature. And like you said, you know, we could be, I, I'm seeing us doing another episode specifically on how to cleanse from this uh -huh. environmental toxin. Uh -huh because there's even things that we can do for our home to protect from that um i love what you mentioned about turning off the wi-fi at night i see a big difference when that happens another step that you know i'll share um this is going well over a decade ago um i i was addicted to my phone for a while and i think at that time i may have been running my studio too so it was like a necessity people needed to find me at all hours, which is so crazy um, to think, you know, from 7 a.m. till midnight, I needed to be accessible. And, and my confession is that I would actually uh, text while driving. Now that's stopped. Um, but I'll tell you how I stopped it because Sorry it was actually, it. Yeah. it was an addiction. And you know how I stopped it? And I'm speaking to the ladies. I would put the phone in my purse and I would put the purse in the trunk. So there was no temptation. I'd have to stop the car to get the purse. So that trick really, really worked. I'll be honest, I did that for, I don't know, a couple of weeks and it detoxed me from that behavior. Like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't need this. And obviously I don't want to be dangerous, you know, driver. Um, so that helped. And you get a good habit in, then you're done. Yeah. You just keep it yeah. next to you and you just don't do it. Yeah. And really think about it. You know, what's more important? Your actual, this is aside from the driving, you know, what's more important? Your actual relationships with people that you've got in front of you or the people looking for you on the phone, right? Like we can put the phone aside and focus on the people in front of us or the work that we're doing. And another little trick is to put it far away from you, put it on the other side of the house, put it on silent, and really take some time to focus on cooking or focus on your exercise or focus on the kids, focus on yourself, your work, and then go and check. And like you made that calendar, you can actually slot in time. Like I don't check my email all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I have certain time that I go in and I check my emails. Um, so these are little tricks that people can do. And I believe we've stayed on topic of what we do to keep ourselves in check and balance and keep ourselves healthy during this time um, where globally we're being asked a lot, you know, we are. Um, whether I feel like a mom, it, it's so important, you know, without going into the topic of vaccines, but we're being asked a lot in terms of you know, looking into what's happening, pros and cons, worldviews, uh, views of my friends, what people, you know, are researching. And so even that can take so much time and I need to be present to that. But I also need to be present to my family, my dog, my kid. So how do we find that balance of getting pulled and sucked into what's happening globally? Because, you know, it's, it's unprecedented, all of these things that are happening. They're new, They're, uh, people don't know how to react. Families are clashing in terms of their belief sure. system. And um, so how do I deal with that pull into being pulled into global, um, global issues? And then really, you know, our home needs to be sustained and balanced and our, our energy also needs to be here so it's trying to find that balance of both 